Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So for those of you that followed the channel for a while, you'll know that uh, a year ago on the 19th of October 2019, I had a blood test done uh, and I came back with insufficient levels of vitamin D. So I've been taking 5,000 international units a day. Uh, I had another blood test taken on the 19th of November 2020 and I'm well up now into the sufficient range. Uh, which got me to thinking, if I carry on going the way I'm going, am I going to go from sufficient to toxic um, when I get my blood tested again in six months or a year? So I've done some research and I've looked into what happens if you take too much vitamin D. So without further ado, let's jump into the video and let's find out what happens if you do take too much vitamin D as a daily supplement. As we know, vitamin D is extremely important for good health. It plays several roles in keeping our body cells healthy and functioning the way they should. Most people don't get enough vitamin D, so supplementation is very common. However, it's also possible, although rare, for this vitamin to build up and reach toxic levels in our body. Let's look at six potential side effects of getting excessive amounts of this important hormone. Vitamin D is involved in calcium absorption immune function, protecting our bones, muscles and heart health. It occurs naturally in food and is also produced by our body when our skin is exposed to sunlight. Now apart from fatty fish there are very few foods rich in vitamin D so many foods have to be fortified with vitamin D. Very few people get enough sun exposure to produce adequate levels of vitamin D so deficiency is very common. It's estimated that around 1 billion people worldwide don't get enough vitamin D. So I urge you to get a blood test and then only supplement with the amount you need. Let's now talk about vitamin D toxicity. So taking extremely high doses of vitamin D for long periods of time may, and I must stress may, lead to an excessive buildup in your body. Vitamin D toxicity occurs when blood levels rise above 150 nanograms per milliliter. Thankfully, vitamin D toxicity isn't common and occurs almost exclusively in people who take long-term high-dose supplements without monitoring their blood levels. So I strongly recommend getting a blood test and then supplementing only with the amount of vitamin D that you need. Let's now look at elevated blood levels. Achieving adequate levels of vitamin D may help boost your immunity and protect you from diseases such as osteoporosis and cancer, and in three recent studies against COVID-19 too. However, there isn't agreement on an optimal range for adequate levels. Although a vitamin D level of 30 nanograms per milliliter is typically considered adequate, the Vitamin D Council recommends maintaining a level of between 40 and 80 nanograms per milliliter and states that anything over 100 nanograms per milliliter may be harmful. While an increasing number of people are supplementing with vitamin D, it's rare to find someone with very high blood levels of this vitamin. Let's now look at some medical studies. One recent study looked at data from more than 20,000 people over a 10 year period. And it found that only 37 people had levels above 100 nanograms per milliliter. And only one person had true vitamin D toxicity at a level of 364 nanograms per milliliter. In one case study, a woman had a level of 476 nanograms per milliliter after taking a supplement that gave her 186,900 international units of vitamin D per day. She took this for three months. That is 47 times the generally recommended safe upper limit of 4,000 international units per day. This woman was admitted to hospital after she experienced fatigue, forgetfulness, nausea, vomiting and slurred speech. Although only extremely large doses can cause toxicity, 
Even strong supporters of these supplements recommend an upper limit of 10,000 international units per day. Let's now look at elevated blood calcium levels. Vitamin D helps your body absorb calcium from the food that you eat. However, if vitamin D intake is excessive, blood calcium levels may reach levels that can cause unpleasant and potentially dangerous symptoms. Symptoms of high blood calcium levels or hypercalcemia include digestive distress, such as vomiting, nausea, and or stomach pain, fatigue, sometimes dizziness and confusion. It can also cause excessive thirst and in some cases it can also bring on the need for frequent urination. So let's now look at a couple of case studies. The normal range of blood calcium is between 8.5 and 10.2 milligrams per deciliter. In one case study an older man who had dementia received 50,000 international units of vitamin D a day for six months and he was repeatedly hospitalized with symptoms related to high calcium levels. In another case, two men took improperly labeled vitamin D supplements which led to calcium levels of 13.2 and 15. It took over a year for their levels to normalize after they'd stopped taking the vitamin D supplement. Moving on, let's look at some side effects. Many of the side effects of too much vitamin D are related to excessive calcium in the blood. These include nausea, vomiting, and poor appetite. However, these symptoms don't occur in everyone with elevated calcium levels. One study followed 10 people who had developed excessive calcium levels after they had taken high doses of vitamin D to correct a deficiency. Four of them experienced nausea and vomiting, and three of them had a loss of appetite. So only seven out of the 10 did actually encounter some type of side effect. Similar responses to vitamin D megadoses have been reported in other studies. One woman experienced nausea and weight loss after taking a supplement that was found to contain 78 times more vitamin D than the dose stated on the label. So my recommendation is to get a blood test and supplement only if you need it. It's no good wasting good money on supplements that you don't really need. Let's now look at a few more typical side effects. Stomach pain, constipation and diarrhea are common digestive complaints that are often related to food intolerances or irritable bowel syndrome. However, they can also be a sign of elevated calcium levels caused by vitamin D toxicity. These symptoms may occur in those receiving high doses of vitamin D to correct a deficiency. As with other symptoms, responses appear to be individualized even when vitamin D blood levels are similarly elevated. Let's now look at two separate case studies. In the first, a boy developed stomach pain and constipation after taking improperly labeled vitamin D supplements. However, his brother, who also had elevated blood levels, did not show any other symptoms. In another case study, an 18-month-old child was given 50,000 international units a day for three months. That child experienced diarrhea, stomach pain, and other symptoms. Thankfully, these symptoms subsided after the supplementation was curtailed. Let's now address the subject of bone loss. Because vitamin D plays an important role in calcium absorption and bone metabolism, getting enough is crucial for maintaining strong and healthy bones. However, too much vitamin D can be detrimental to bone health. Although many symptoms of excessive vitamin D are attributed to high blood calcium levels, some researchers suggest that megadoses may also lead to low levels of vitamin K2 in the blood. This is important because one of vitamin K2's most important functions is to keep calcium in our bones and in our teeth and out of our soft tissue. To protect against bone loss, avoid taking excessive vitamin D supplements 
and take a vitamin K2 supplement also. Now you can also eat foods that are rich in vitamin K2, such as grass-fed dairy and meat. Vegans, however, may need to supplement. Let's now talk about kidney injury. Excessive vitamin D intake can also result in kidney injury. In one case study, a man was hospitalized for kidney failure, elevated blood calcium levels and other symptoms which had occurred after he received a vitamin D injection prescribed by his doctor. Indeed, most studies have reported moderate to severe kidney injury in people who develop vitamin D toxicity. In one study of 62 people that had received an excessively high dose of vitamin D through injections, all 62 experienced kidney failure, whether they had healthy kidneys or an existing kidney condition. So if you supplement with vitamin D, it's important that you don't take too much. Even if you follow a healthy diet, you may require supplements to achieve your optimum vitamin D levels. However, it's also possible to have too much of a good thing. Make sure to avoid excessive doses of vitamin D. Generally, 4,000 international units or less a day is considered safe, but only as long as you monitor your blood values. In addition, make sure you purchase your supplements from a reputable manufacturer. This will reduce the risk of accidental overdose due to incorrect labeling. If you've been taking vitamin D supplements and you experience any of the symptoms I've mentioned, please consult a healthcare professional as soon as is practicable. As always, I believe you should take a blood test. Once you've had the blood test, if you do require supplementation, then only supplement with the vitamin that you need. Don't take it just because you think it's a good idea. So only for those who are interested, this is the vitamin D3 supplement I take. Also includes vitamin K2 and magnesium. It retails for 15 pounds sterling, which is about $19.30. If you use the discount code MYNMN at checkout, it will cost you £13.50, which is around $17.30. So a saving of around $2. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative or both. Um, what I'd like to know in the comments below is if you do take vitamin D supplements, do you take them because you've had a blood test and you know that your levels are low or do you take them because you think they're low and you just take them to be on the safe side? Uh, and also let me know if after watching this video, you think you now need to go and have a blood test to find out whether or not you are in fact deficient in vitamin D. Uh, I'd be very interested to know what your, what your comments are. Uh, well, that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Um, as always, please take care. I'll see you soon and bye for now.